Hey, welcome back to another Thelangelis video. This one's a little bit more technical. We've got a lot of different sayings that were shown at this great presentation at Dismaland over in the UK. This is from Jenny Holzer, who's started off in the late 70s posting all these things around over in New York and became popular to the point that by 1982, she had her sayings being put up on the Times Square little ticker thing over there. Uh, so what I've done is taken um, almost 300 of her sayings and I put them into this little web page. And eventually I'm going to style it so that it's like a more 3D look. So it looks like an actual uh, real machine. One of these, like uh, you're driving along and the and the freeway's got a closure. They got these signs. Well, that's, that's the kind of sign that she always displays her stuff on. And she's displayed it over at the Tate Modern over in, in London and displayed a lot of different places with these just like uh, LED signs or other kind of signs like that. So uh, this page right now with this uh, 270 different things is right over here. And here's all the sayings, a bunch of them. So I'll kind of separate it up and then I put some little punctuation in that figures out how to kind of format things a little bit. So I have a little algorithm there. Some simple styling that makes it so that the div has a font that is this five by seven LED looking thing and then has some glow to it with this text shadow. So that's kind of fun. And then the radio buttons that you saw, they can pick one of different sequences. So there was an original thing that she did back in 1977. If you can find one of those pages, it's worth, I guess, like $100 now. You can eBay the thing. It's pretty uh, rare anymore, but she printed a few thousand back then and just pasted them all over the place. And then she was in the Tate Modern, so then there's that sequence. And they didn't have a machine that had a lot of memory on it, so they only had like certain parts of the alphabet, kind of like the middle of it. If you do the Tate Modern sequence, you find that alphabetically, like these are all listed out alphabetically, but the Tate Modern stuff starts like in the middle, doesn't even get to the end. And then at Dismaland, these are the only ones that I'm aware of because I didn't stay for very long to see like what are all the range of stuff that it was. But I uh, took a look at some other people's pictures and videos and crap like that online. And I think I've got at least like half of the stuff that was on the one over at Dismaland, which is a lot less actually. That sequence, not a lot of stuff there. And then you can just see like a barrage of all 273. But here's the idea. There's, uh, of all of these sayings that she's had, she has put them out on Twitter, like between 2007 and 2012. She put them out on Twitter for a while. And so this is a way to be able to gauge popularity. Uh, by the way, I do recommend going out and checking out these sayings. They're kind of interesting. Uh, this one, I think, has so many retweets and likes just because it's like the last one that she did and it's been a few years so I think that's artificially high in terms of count but these other guys we can get some gauge to the popularity of each of these from the count that's involved so let's grab all of this text just right in here I'll start like selecting this I want to go put this into a database this is database class today you guys we get to see if we can figure out how to sequence all of these in terms of popularity. And then there's a lot of repeats as well. Don't even have to worry about different font sizes or anything as long as we just capture all of that content. So I've now selected, holding the shift key, I clicked again there. I've selected all of the text that's from her tweets from back in 07 up until 2012. That's the most recently recent time that she's been out there tweeting. Copied it out to the clipboard now. And let's go out and uh, have some fun. We will be working with a SQL database that's just Postgres. And we can create a new database just for her and connect over to it. Backslash C here in Postgres makes us connect over to a database. And we can tab complete when there's something that's, that's there. Actually, no, I guess it's not. It doesn't even know about the tab complete on that one. Oh, you know what it is? It doesn't tab complete because uh, I named it Holzer with an uppercase H, but I didn't put it in quotes, so it thinks that it's a lowercase h, so there it is. That's tab completing for us. And there's no tables here, 
we can see the list of tables with backslash dt. A relation kind of means a table or a view or whatever else, but uh, none of those over here. So we now have on the clipboard still all of that tweet text. We want to make all of this data. We want to make a table to be able to hold this data. So let's create a table that'll hold tweets. And really, we should name tables in a singular fashion. It's just kind of a rule of thumb when you're making an ERD anyway, or naming tables anyway, then it should be like, this is a table for a tweet. But like we know that there's going to be hundreds of them. Don't You don't have to say that it's plural. And we'll have the tweet itself. So the text of it that will be of type text. So actually, why don't we put like, uh, this is TXT of type text. And we'll have the number of retweets as an integer. And then the number of likes also as an integer. So there's our table. It doesn't have any rows in it, of course, yet. Now, if we do backslash dt, it'll show us that we have that one table there. And it's time for us to go massage the data on the clipboard so that it can be a bunch of insert statements. So I'll open up a new tab here in the Sublime Editor and paste in all that various amount of stuff. There's a lot of repetition in the mix. Every tweet, it seems like, consumes five lines. All right, I'm going to go to the top. And this is just extraneous, it looks like. But all together, if I were to uh, edit all of these guys, I could perhaps make some insert statements that would work out for that table that we just built. So I'm going to hold down Command D a lot of times and then go edit this thing. So we have just those three columns of information. The tweet itself, the text of the tweet, and the number of retweets and the number of likes. Now with my cursor all set up in all those places, I will want to take out this line entirely. So I will just highlight all of that and this previous line as well. That can go away completely. And it looks like this, like in these lines, this is duplicated. Retweet 11, favorite 26. So I don't need that line. I don't need that information twice. I just need to have it once. So we'll kill those three lines in every case and then shorten this thing down dramatically. So now each tweet is consuming two lines in the mix. And it looks like there is some extra crap there at the bottom, but that's no big deal. Now, I'd like to make this into an insert statement, and the first thing does need to be the tweet itself, so it's nice that we're at that point. So we'll be inserting into that table that we just built. It's the tweet table. Notice the column order, text, retweets, and likes. So, so inserting into tweet. And then I actually don't care about putting like the column names in here. I could put that, I guess. Um, maybe pro, I guess. But you know, the I'll rely upon the insert statement at this point with this very simple operation. I'll rely upon the insert statement defaulting to the sequence of the columns that exist in the table. We don't have anything that has like a primary key of the sequence or anything to worry about like that. But, oh, maybe it's applied IDs, whatever. So I'm not too worried about it. So we'll say just then values include the text here. And before we get too much into the text, uh, we will be putting the text inside of these ticks. But the problem is there might be apostrophes in this text. I mean, throughout, there might be some apostrophes, and that would goof us up a little bit there. So let me break out of this multiple line insert mode here. Well, it looks like this had gotten a little bit shuffled around strangely. Let me move that A back a little bit. Now it's all studded off in a weird place. So uh, looks like we have some garbage at the bottom here still. But altogether, we have like 732 lines. They're all carved up now and halfway edited towards being insert statements. And then our risk that like we've got apostrophes sometimes inside. Here's an example right now. If we were to put at the start of this line an apostrophe and the end of this line an apostrophe, it's not going to understand 
that this doesn't mean like, oh, stop the text right here. It's like it'll put in that much and then think that I suck because I've put this weird thing in there that doesn't make any sense to it. So that's trouble. We want to clean that up. So all apostrophes need to be escaped essentially. So SQL does that with just double ticks. I need to find all ticks and double tick them. So I'm gonna hold down Command D again after having now selected this tick. And I'll double tick the things by adding another one. And now it'll be a lot happier as I go through and edit a little bit further here. Let's be back up at the top here and find all cases when we say anything like that. So that's all of our insert statements that we're writing out here. Holding Command D down so we select all those guys. We can keep then putting this together and have a whole fresh insert statement for every one of these tweets that she's done in the past. So we'll put uh, a tick at the front and then we'll go to the very end of everything, 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 everything. Using command right arrow a couple of times, making sure that we're at the end. Every one of those editors there is at the end of that thing. Uh, then we'll put another tick at the end and a little comma. Now let's bring the next line into play by pressing function delete so it like deletes forward. Now we have all this all lined up. We want that number, so I'm gonna hold down option and press right arrow. So I got the number, even if it was a single digit number or in this case, single digit number or a double digit number, then option right arrow just skips to the end of whatever that line is. It always has the word retweets right here. So I will highlight retweets and instead put in a comma. And then I'll need to go to the end of this one, be it single or double digit again, then within option right arrow. Uh, and then I'll highlight to the end of the line. So shift command right arrow. And then sometimes I have it like with word wrap on, I have it not going to the end of the line every time. So I'll need to do another shift command right arrow to get to the end of those lines that are kind of stragglers. Uh, delete those out and then just put in a uh, closing paren and a semicolon. All insert statements or all statements in SQL in general need a semicolon at the end. So now what have we ended up with, but apparently insert statements to put together all of these tweets inside of that table. I'll press escape a couple times. I want to see that there's nothing fucked up at the front or the end. Those are the places that often, when you're doing this kind of editing, things could be a little bit strange. And yeah, this one, oh, the reason being is because this had like um, comma separated stuff. So if we undo for a moment, we can do a command Z to undo and a command Y to redo inside of this environment. If we undo, yeah, the comma separated was 1670 one, one, and 1188 eight for the retweets and the favorites right there, the likes that they had. So we need to represent those numbers again. But again, I think that they're kind of inflated just because that's the last tweet that she ever did like back in 2012. And since then, people have been going out there and saying, I like this one. All things are delicately interconnected. I really like this one. So anyway, remember the number 1670 or 1188? None of them have that much, by the way. So I think I'm going to do actually just push those values down because I think it's artificially high. Just my own opinion. You know, you can hate it if you want. I don't care. Whatever. So 500 to 400, I think I'm going to do that. So redoing all those changes. So this guy for the very first one would be 500. And this guy, 400. Just Because it, it is a great, it's actually the one that she started with, actually, way back in 2007. So I think it's those five years that she was tweeting those things. This is like, it's like the end of the beginning. It's like chiastic or whatever. It's like, I got a little artistic value there in saying, all things are delicately interconnected. And then the very first one, all things are delicately interconnected. That's what she tweeted like ages ago, back when nobody knew her and she only got this little bit of following at that point. It's one of her most popular ones and yet it's like nobody retweeted it. <laughs> what the hell? Uh, so these are all the insert statements. Now let's bring them in. I've highlighted this with Command A, Command C to copy it and we'll paste it in to where we have this tweet table and we'll see like all these inserts going, oh my gosh, whoa. All right, so now how many rows do we have? We should have 366 if uh, everything seemed to be right over there back from Sublime. So we'll do a select count splat for the tweet. Oh, 364, well, maybe I don't know what I'm doing. 
I don't know. Or maybe a couple of them were goofed or something. That would be kind of interesting. Uh, anyway, it's probably still pretty good data. Was it really? I mean, it was, what, 366 right there? Hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know what would be goofed up on that. Is that where we should have been? I'll have to find out, and I'll do a little thing in the notes, I guess, later. I just don't care enough to worry about it at this stage, I guess. Uh, anyway, so let's see like some maximum and minimum values and things like that. So the max of the likes and the min of the likes, the max of the retweets and the min of the retweets from the tweets. Okay. So some of them like nobody cared. Uh, sorry, Jenny. <laughs> Uh, but they, at least, you know, at the very least, they liked it. One of them apparently liked it like three times. Probably when she was just getting started there pretty early. But then, uh, like, the max of the likes is, like, pretty high. And as is, is the retweets, that's pretty good. So it started being not as popular, and then it ended up being more popular. Let's find out how many unique things we've got. So if we just do a select count splat, we saw that we had 364 of these things. But if we do a select distinct of the actual tweet text itself from the tweet, then here they start and they go on through. And if I press spacebar a lot, then it goes through all of them and it says that there's 211. So Apparently, there's like some that got retweeted, like she tweeted the same thing twice or multiple times or something, because out of 366, we actually have 211 that are unique. So let's also, by the way, do an order by the text so that we alphabetize all that stuff coming back. And let's see if we can find if there's any like um, errors like she retweeted maybe and it would have extra punctuation or like misspelling or something and so it's like the same it's supposed to be like the same one but uh, it was just like goof let's see if we can pick out anything that might be like duplicated in this regard it's a lot of it's better to whatever but that's not actually any goof ups there a lot of it's saying oh here's one though uh, Rechanneling destructive impulses, and then so she accidentally put an extra space, which you know it's acceptable, whatever. It's like it's Jenny, man. She can do what she wants. She's awesome. Um, so I'm gonna put that on the clipboard, and I'll want to make sure that I change that out to be because this this is actually a little duplication. So I want to make sure that's all shored up. Any more of them in the mix? Getting towards the end here, up to the T's. Doesn't look like there's anything else that's goofball here. I guess that's about it. So out of these distinct 211, there's actually really distinct. There should be like 210. So let's update the tweet and set text is equal to that same thing without that extra space. So I'll paste that in off of the clipboard and take out the extra space. Where? text is currently equal to where it's goofed up. So that's one that's down in the mix. Uh, I wonder what I can do as well to be able to see like instead of having to go through all those things to find out how many distinct there were, um, is there a way to select a count that would include the distinct text? Well, what if we do uh, select count splat from something which is a subquery. So we can take a query inside of a query and just select some something that would be unique in terms of text. How about in this case from our tweet and have that to act as if it were a table. 
it'll be a derived table as long as we have an alias for it, like in this case we're calling it x. So this select statement becomes essentially a table for the outer select statements. It's a kind of an inner subquery, but we really call it a derived table. So that's finding that there's 364 total, and then if on the inside we see do select distinct, now this is an easy way to be able to say how many distinct things do we have. Instead of having to list them all out like we did before, like 211 of them or something, this is just showing us now that there's 210 based on this derived table thing that we've done. That's kind of a fun trick. Uh, what else are we going to do? We want to find some statistics surrounding how the data is distributed for tweets in Jenny's sayings. So. How about we do now uh, an average? I mean, overall across the whole thing, what's the average amount of likes that she's got from all the tweets whatsoever? So on average, it's 91. We can also add in there the average number of retweets. And we see they're really on par. 91 and 93, they're just like neck and neck. It's almost like on parity there. Probably some of her tweets have more shares and other tweets have more likes, but overall it's averaged out to be very even, which is pretty impressive, honestly. Uh, now, let's find out then her tweet itself. Uh, now, there, there could have been, as we see that there's 210 unique ones and we know that there's 366 total, apparently there's some duplication. Let's also see about uh, the count of how many so overall, the count splat right now, if we put that in, it would be 364 of them all together. But then we want to see, like, for each unique tweet itself, we want to see the count of how many there were, and then these averages of likes and retweets for each tweet itself. This is where we're mixing both non-aggregate and aggregate type stuff in one query, and so it forces us to use a group by. If we try to run this without, It'll say you suck, uh, tweet text must appear in the group by clause. So we'll fix that up, group by text then, if you think that should be, and then sure enough it works. We've got all of these uh, tweets, and then how many times it happened, like this one, wow, it happened four different times. Looking back, it's the first sign of aging to decay. So apparently maybe Jenny has got this on her mind because she like tweeted it four times, or this one like she tweeted five times. Offer very little information about yourself. Don't be subject to identity theft. Don't even do that. Giving your credit card data out online, be careful about that, or whatever it is. Uh, anyway, we see that there's a marked difference in terms of popularity of different tweets. Loving animals as a substitute activity did not really resonate with people, whereas offer very little information about yourself. That did resonate, apparently. Maybe that's why she chose to tweet it five times over the course of those five years. Once a year is not terrible, I think, for that. It's good information to have. Offer very little information about yourself. Sounds like a good idea altogether. And wow, people really like this even better, actually. You have to hurt others to be extraordinary. She only tweeted it once, but like people were all about it, in terms of averages at least. I think that overall, maybe we care about uh, the likes more than the retweets, or maybe we care about the retweets more than the likes. We can pick one or the other. I think I'll actually sort by the retweets, this third column, or this fourth column in the mix. I think that'll sort this descending in terms of the number of retweets and just try to see kind of how many or, or whatever on this. So I'll get out of this where I could press space and see more and see more and such by just pressing control C and then it brings me back to this Postgres interface. And then I can order it by the fourth column descending. I can also limit it by a certain number. Like, let's see the top 10 of these guys. So we'll just limit 10. And now, wow, here is the very most popular tweet that she's ever had, apparently. In a dream, you saw a way to survive and you were full of joy. And then further down, there's the next and the next and the next. In terms of the amount of retweets, anyway, this fourth column is what it's sequencing by in a descending fashion. And we see it's not always in keeping with the number of likes. Like this is, obviously this is the most popular, 947. Wow, I don't see any in the even 
700, 600, 700 range in the next slide. This is way popular. But then uh, it bounces around up and down as we look here. Like, well, here's a 600 range actually for your creative and for apparently people like this a lot. Uh, but then they didn't retweet it as much. So this is one where they liked the hell out of it, but then they didn't retweet it. And then let's see if we can find one. Like this is where they retweeted it even a little more than they liked it. So ultimately it balances it out as we saw before. Here's another one. They retweeted it more than they liked it. Humor is a release. Apparently like people like to retweet that damn thing. Pressing spacebar, we'll get to the end of these top 10 here. There's a way to be able to now put together something which we can bring back over to JavaScript and incorporate there. Because what I want to ultimately do is have like uh, like a top 50 in terms of popularity of the Twitter sphere here. For every one of our tweets, like I want to have uh, back in my code over here, getting back to the web page, here's the four different radio buttons that I currently offer. There's the original thing that she posted back in 77, like the exact same sequence and everything. And I think there's only like 60 of those or something. And then there's the ones that she did over at Tate Modern. And then there's the Dismaland ones that were recent that I'm not sure that I have all of anyway. I'll have to write list for it. But there's all of her stuff. And like she pulls from the same content every single time. She's been adding to this stuff, this treasure trove over the years. Uh, and then I want to have like another radio button. Let me put it up there now, actually. That'll be the, um, what are we doing here? That'll be the top 50. Uh, tweets by by Twitter and such. Top 50 according to Twitter. We'll have that the option here. Let's have that to be option number three. And then this other one, the option number four, where it's like everything, everything, all of them going. Down below is where I have some more like logic to sort out what's the next one to show, what's the next one to show. Here's the lists. There's all of the ones from the original sheet that she posted on stuff way back in 77. Here's the ones that were over at the Tate Modern and displayed. And this is the ones that they didn't have a machine that was capable of holding enough data to have more than this. This is like as many as the machine could hold and it ran out of RAM. <laughs> Silly thing. And then there's the few that I know definitely were at Dismaland and the exact sequence that they were in. If anybody knows more about exact ones at Dismaland, please let me know so I can add to this thing. But now we'll have an additional array that will be the Twitter popularity at the top 50 or something. Or maybe I'll even do like, uh, maybe I'll do the query that'll have like a top 52. We'd have a thing that would set it up in, in the tweet and it would like retweet her thing for one tweet every week out of a year. So you've got like a year of Jenny or something in life. That'd be pretty good at the end of the year. Maybe you want to redo that again. So this is all just on Philandalus and I'm getting all these ideas based on Dismaland being fairly popular and stuff. And and also I just set up this Twitter off and I thought, well, hey, what can I do with this? So I'm thinking maybe I'll maybe I'll use that to be able to go out and tweet for people. Uh, also, let's see, in my code, when people change the radio button choice, then it goes into this cur sec thing, current sequence. Which sequence are you currently visualizing? So there's like on the event handle when it changes it, it modifies that curve sec thing and does an integer there. It just picks it up. That's a value was just zero to three previously, where like three was all of her truisms, all 273 of them. And then zero, one, and two were different lists. Now I need to move that forward though. So now when the current sequence is four, that's the one. That's the one that will be like, uh, That'll be the market that says, let's go through all these guys. And then we'll need to have something in regards of a sequence. It's like for sequence number three. And the rest of this stuff should just work. Uh, there'd be another discussion for another time to be able to talk about some of this JavaScript. I just wrote it like about an hour ago and had some fun with it. So that's about good here. We now just need to write some database queries to figure out what all goes in here. Or get the stuff from the database anyway, then over to be able to manage that. I'll see about this page and go back and re-render what we had on my site. Make sure the thing like still works. Yeah, there it is. And top 50 according to Twitter. Oh, I didn't even spell according right. That's nice. <laughs> anyway, 
Uh, top 50 recording on Twitter doesn't have anything to list, so of course it's like blank right now. Nothing going on. So top 50 recording for Twitter. Oh, that's a little better. Call me a perfectionist. There it is. And then if we step across instead of Dismaland, like, okay, it starts out the sequence for Dismaland. Or we go over here, like, all 273 in alphabetic order. That would take a little while. All right, so now let's go back over to some Postgres queries. And how could we then get a top 50 list? In fact, even, I want to have it not to have these arcane numbers and such. I mean, that's nice to see, I guess like how many likes and how many retweets and all that kind of garbage. But I actually just want to have a numerical, like this is the number one top thing, the number two top thing or whatever. So this is where windowing functions are useful. Maybe I don't even want to represent these average likes, average retweets. We've remembered, hopefully you've seen like a little of this, what's the top 10. And so just like put that in your brain a little bit and kind of the sequence that you see here. And we can do this rank over some sort of a sequence. So ordering it by either the likes or the retweets. I think I'm going to just order it by what we just ordered it with here. Um, we had done an order by the retweets in a descending fashion. So I'll actually do that at then as well, ranking over average retweets in a descending sort of a way. And then this will end up being a numerical thing. There's the first most whatever, and the second most, and the third, and the fourth, and the fifth. It will run into some collisions, most likely, where like a couple things are number 33 or something, you know, it'll have like some duplication in the mix because it's like the exact same average of retweets. But that's all right, we can sort that out in a bit. So we still keep the group by. Uh, this is kind of as if we were grouping twice, kinda. So the group by is grouping by the actual tweet text. And then secondarily, we're, we could do a partition by, it's, it's not like grouping by, but it's like sequencing by, I guess, is what all it's doing right now, this order by. So the winnowing function, this is perhaps the most simple use of a winnowing function that we could do, uh, just to have like that top 50 number, the, just the number, what's the top 50 number in the mix? And now we don't anymore need to be ordering by four descending, but rather, since we only have three columns, we'll order by three descending. And instead of limiting by 10, we can then say, how about this like limit 50 or 52, we had said that we wanted to have like one for every week of the year. Maybe we'll have a list that we can have people easily retweet or we'll have like a little algorithm that like once a week it'll tweet on their behalf and they can pick maybe a time to be able to throw out a Jenny Holder tweet. So there it is in a descending way. Did I just goof this up? Let's see. Class action. This is not the most popular. This is the least popular. And I think I've goofed up. Oh, do you know what I did? Ha <laughs> ha. This doesn't need to be descending anymore. Third column is the rank. So now this is the most least popular. These are the ones that people hate. Um, People don't understand these ideas. War is a purification right. Freedom is a luxury, not a necessity. Like people don't understand this stuff. And so they're like, I hate these. These are the lowest ranked things in the mix. So this creed presupposes moral integrity. Maybe you have that same sentiment if you read through some of these. It's just like, what in the hell is she trying to say? Maybe that's what they're thinking there. But that's like the kind of the low end of the totem pole there. Let's take off this descending. We already got this guy going to descending. So this should be the first best, second best, third best. Like this is a numerical thing that we want to go ascending over here. Order by the third thing, ascending. Yeah, this looks better. In a dream, you saw a way to survive and you're full of joy. So that is the most popular one. We knew that from before. And so forth. We remember seeing like perhaps humor as a release or whatever. These are the most popular ones in sequence. And this is how many times she has tweeted them. The very most popular ones, it looks like she's only ever tweeted once, which is pretty amazing. Anyway, the ranks go up. Here's the top 10, and it keeps going. And that works. Some of them she's tweeted a few times. The one that she's tweeted three different times. All things are delicately interconnected. 
that's the one that she actually started the whole game with and ended the whole game with, like from 2007 to 2012. And apparently she tweeted that thing again once in the middle. So there's the top 50. And let's now work with that exact data and bring it back over into JavaScript. So I'm going to highlight all this stuff. There they all are, all 52. Copy that out to the clipboard. Go back over to Sublime. I've been using the Atom Editor as well for some of the videos that we've done here, but Sublime as well. It's kind of a cute little editor. So the idea is that we want to have an array that would have uh, both some of the, the tweet, but as well then uh, the number of popularity. I don't care actually about how many times she's tweeted, I guess. Maybe I'll just throw that stuff out. Uh, but I care about the numerical 1 to 52 popularity thing. There is number 52 is worrying, can help you prepare. Still very popular, apparently. So we'll go back and do a similar sort of thing, like a line by line sort of a deal. I'm going to highlight, holding the shift key and pressing the right arrow at the end of this line, I'm going to highlight essentially a carriage return. Uh, all of these are just a single line. We see that like it's like double spaced here is because we have word wrap going. So having highlighted that new line character, I'll press Command D a lot, and I'll have those 52 all highlighted. Or at least 51 of the 52, looks like I didn't press enter at the end of that one. I just don't care enough, I guess. I'll edit it by hand later. So after having highlighted that, I want this to be the, uh, the very last thing inside of a JavaScript array. And then I want there to be another sort of a member before that. And then we'll go over here. It's more trickery than with the option left. Highlighting stuff. Another if in case she tweeted it more than a single digit number of times, we'll do an option left there and holding down and doing the left arrow a lot. Uh, now shift option left, go to the front of all of these lines, but then a lot of it like has text on it. So I'll do the right arrow then just to go and hopefully highlight all of these counts, just those counts. And I'll be taking all of those out those 50 times. Looks pretty accurate. So pressing the delete key, now I need to have this and as being text with a quote and then a comma. So we're going to put this inside of essentially every line here becomes then a, uh, an entry inside of an array, a large array. And then every one of them is like a two position array as it is as well. JavaScript doesn't have things like, uh, like having a dictionary or a hash or something like a key value store. Uh, if it were, I would use that instead. It does have the thought of objects, and I guess I could have done that here. But eh, I'll just go cheap and just like have it like this. So now we have 52 different small arrays that are comma separated. And I need to put a quote at the front of those, so now it's all just a bunch of text. So each thing is a piece of text, and the numerical popularity number from number 1 up to number 52. I'll press the escape key to stop editing all those lines at once. Uh, open up the whole damn thing as being in a little square bracket there and say that popularity is equal to this whole big array. I guess I should say var popularity. It's going to be some JavaScript I'm going to paste into the browser in a moment. And here's the one that I need to edit by hand just because I forgot to do that all properly before or whatever, have that carriage turn in the mix. Worrying can help you prepare. I suppose I wasn't perfectly prepared to be able to do this editing before. Whatevs. So then we need just a quote and a comma. Put that inside of an array. And that looks pretty damn good. And now I'll copy all of that to the clipboard. And for our next trick, we'll take it across over to the JavaScript in the browser. I'm not sure that this is perfectly running right. Like there might be something in the console that says, I hate you, just because I had like nothing in that array before. Let's go see what that's saying for us. Oh, split of undefined. Yeah, that's actually probably an empty array thing there. That's what I was complaining about, I think. Anyway, 
we have over here that large array that was built out before, which is the truisms in my code. That's the uh, the thing that has all of her cool truisms, all 273 of those things. And I'll now paste in all of the 52 things from Twitter. And so we have all of the popularity stuff all figured out. There's all 52 of those guys. And we want to cycle through and match this up and kind of somehow um, organize a list of what number it should be. So I'll be cycling through each of uh, all of those ones from the truisms. So far, var i in truisms. That'll range from 0 to 272, since there's 273 of them. And for all of those guys, just pressing shift enter so I have the next line to be able to continue this whole thought. Then I will cycle through all of the popularity stuff. And then if we have a match in the text, then I will say, oh, apparently this is one of the ones I want to track, one of these offsets in the truisms that I want to spit out. So let's see if, in fact, the truisms of i, which is a piece of text already, is equal to the popularity of J, the first member, the first member of, of these arrays being the text part there. If that's the case, then we've got ourselves a match. And all I need to console log out is simply what position we found this guy in the truisms. Hopefully we find a match for each. And that looks like a loop that should run through and try to find that stuff. Here's all these console logs that just got spat out. But unfortunately, we find that only a few are matching. And then the reason being, what we've got in terms of this text doesn't have any of my crazy formatting that uh, I've got over on the other side. So over here, notice I'd put in all these like pipes and dots and stuff. And so I think we need to take out anything that is not an A through Z. Like we need to try to match these guys on solely just A through Z and see if there's actually a match, disregarding any sort of punctuation whatsoever. So that was a nice try, I guess, with that cute for loop, but not perfect yet. Bringing this back with the up arrow. So we'll go through all of these truisms, and then we need to say that like our version of this truism, so our truism is equal to, first of all, truisms of what we're working with. And then while truism index of taking out dots, while that is greater than or equal to zero. So there is one, essentially. Or if truism index of a pipe is greater than or equal to zero. Or if there's a space. So I'm going to take out all that crap. So truism index of. The funny thing about replace that we're about to use here in a moment is that it only replaces the first instance of something. That's why we have this while loop going on. So while we have any sort of that content, then truism is equal to truism replace all the dots with an empty. Or actually, I guess we could do, you know what, actually to match it up without having to fuck with the other one, we could do just the dots and the pipes with the space. And then we don't even have to sense if it has any sort of a space. Here I am kind of thinking out loud, I guess some of this. But anyway, dots and pipes return in the spaces. So this is where we turn in the dot and the space and also replace any sort of instance of pipes with spaces as well. And then after having done all of that nonsense, instead of testing against truisms of i, we test against the modified truism that we've got in that variable up above. 
And now we've got perhaps all 52 in an exact sequence as to their popularity. Or is it the popularity? No, actually, this would be the sequence as to the sequence that we have in the truisms, which makes sense that it's like numerically it's from 0 up to almost 273, 267 there, because this is like now in sequence of the truisms. If we did the same thing and then had the popularity, if we were cycling through the popularity, first of all, cycle through all those guys, and then cycle through the truisms, that would be a better way to go. So this is an example of at least finding all 52 most popular things, so that's nice. And in fact, we could console log out the popularity itself, the numerical popularity with popularity j of 1. Let's do that, actually, while we're at it. It's kind of a fun little ride. What this kind of does in JavaScript is it's kind of like doing um, a little bit of a join. It's like a poor man's join over here in JavaScript. Hopefully that makes some sense to you, I guess. There it is, the numbers as to how much popularity we've got. So we have a couple options. We could just take this over into SQL and goof around with it there. Or we could rewrite that for loop, that nested for loop, so it would go the other direction and be happier anyway as well. Uh, I guess I guess what I'll do, because here I am in JavaScript land and don't want to really pop back over to PSQL again, I'll just go ahead and rewrite this for loop, this nested for loop business. So instead of starting with the truisms, uh, let's copy this stuff out to the clipboard right now. Even uh, Command X, we're going to steal that away. And we'll start instead with this popularity thing. And then inside, we'll now paste the stuff that I have on the clipboard reinvent this guy and these guys as well and what have we got now sequencing it from most popular to least popular from number 0 to 51 of that 52 number array those indexes going from 0 to 51 there it'll for each one of those guys go through all the truisms and goof with the truism to be able to clean it up and we have this if statement being in the wrong place. I'll press shift enter so it doesn't run this thing yet. But yeah, that was it's starting to look pretty good. It cleans up the truism. It sees if the popularity is proper. And then it console logs out the index itself and then our popularity number, which we're hoping then for the popularity to range from 1 to 52. And then sure enough, we now have all of the most popular tweets uh, matched up then or at least then most of them, it looks like some of them did not connect. So numbers two and three in popularity, we want to hunt you down. Uh, five and six, that's kind of weird that it didn't match up perfectly, I guess. And apparently number 21, it was duplicated, but that's not a big deal, I guess. This will still find, it'll try anyway to then find the 52 most popular tweets. So from here, if we want to at least experiment with this, like what I'd like to do is just find out where those missing guys are, I guess, in the mix. If it gets to one that, oh, it didn't actually have a match, that is of interest to me. I want to find all situations in which it could not find a match. So I'll now write out where it doesn't find matches. Let's have yet another variable then in the mix. Right about in here, we'll say, bar is matched, pessimistically, first of all, is equal to false. And then if we do find a match with this if statement, then we'll say, hey, good, good times, man. We do have a match right here. So that's not going to go very much. And we'll say is matched is equal to true. not matched console log out the one that didn't fit that's a popularity of J and the text involved on that so anytime we see the text it should be couldn't find the match 
But if we just see the numbers, then it's like, okay, this is the offset in our list of 273 matched up with whatever popularity number in the mix there. So here's the ones that it could not find. Oh yeah, that actually is something that I don't even have on my list. I know that I haven't seen that. I haven't entered in that one before. I thought I had that one. No, maybe not actually. Yeah, all of these are like things that she tweeted that I don't yet have on my list. I guess I need to add some. <laughs> Having two or three people in love with you is like money in the bank. That's an interesting way to live life, I think. All I'm going to do uh, to complete this video, so we've seen how to sort out stuff using Postgres, and we've seen how to work with JavaScript a bit. I'm going to go steal all of this JavaScript code that I've been goofing around with here and just put that back over in my kind of scratch space over here. And I'll be needing to add in those other um, tweets. These guys that are just text-based, I'll be adding those in in a bit. But for the moment, I'm going to hack this again right now and just take out this whole console log. Don't care about that is matched garbage right now. And then I'll just have this numerical sequence as to popularity. And then let's put that in to be able to finally see this thing back to life again, I guess. Here are all the ones that did match. And we'll steal all those numbers out and edit them up. So then we have an array of stuff. So copying that out. Here's the list. It has all this VM garbage. And thankfully, it's repetitive. And we can just be left with only the numbers that we care about there. So we have the comma separated list there. All those guys. This is now another new feature on our site. Copy that out. This is the number one most popular, number two, number three, and so forth, all the way through less than 52 because we had some that didn't match, but still threw all of them in the mix. We'll go back to where we had all those sequences and that empty array, and now we can fill it up. That thing is called sequences, and it's just on the global scope here in JavaScript. And with all of that set, and I realized as well, by the way, that I had two of these as saying that checked is equal to true. Let's just start off with the dismal end thing again still. Save that out. Reload this page. No errors, so that's a good sign. And the dismal end thing is working. And now we'll go over to our top 50. Just believing something can make it happen. Yeah, that sounds good. So complex. You don't always respond to danger. Let's see if that's one of our top ones in the mix. There it is. It was all the way to that one already because it skipped past a few that were only tweeted but not yet in my list over there. So that's an example just of stealing stuff from out in the Twitter sphere and putting things together uh, through use of database, putting things together back over in JavaScript. Hopefully it made some sense and look for this page being updated quite a bit. I'm going to do some 3D transform on this so it really looks like a sign. It'll be kind of skewed over and then it'll look like a freestanding sign like they had over there at this morning. Have fun you guys. Hope you guys love coding and get back with us if you want to see some more crazy stuff about how to work with data, Rails, Ruby, uh, gosh, lots of different weird topics. JavaScript like you see here. Good fun you guys.